Hey everybody, this is Robot here from Vespa Motorsport and ScooterWest.com, your number one source for parts and accessories for your Vespa scooter here in North America. So, have you ever wondered what the difference is between a Vespa Primavera and Sprint? I'm talking the modern ones, 2015 and newer. Um, it's a just a tiny bit more than some badge engineering. And obviously the most a uh, stark difference is the style of headlight. So this is a 2021 Vespa Sprint in red, and it's got the trapezoidal headlight, reminiscent of the old Vespa Super Sport from the 60s. And the Primavera's got the timeless classic round headlight. Um, some of the other changes, you have round mirror versus the kidney bean mirrors. You have a different rack, and the wheels are a little bit different. Uh, originally when the Primavera came out, it had 11 inch wheels. Uh, later they went to the same size as the, the Sprint with 12 inch wheels. So they both sit at the same height. Um, obviously you can lower it with a lowering bracket. You could go as far as putting 11 inch wheels, but the gearing of the motor is actually different. But back in 2017, they just decided to do 12 inch across the board. So there was less differentiation between the Sprint and Primavera. But here in North America, everybody loves the classic round headlight. So what am I gonna do today? I'm gonna behead this poor Sprint and give it a new soul, the soul of a Primavera. So pretty much you need about a half dozen different parts to build a Primavera with parts bin parts. Many of the parts are completely interchangeable, such as switch gears, the perches, the grips, even the speedometer, even though the Primavera speed speedometer does have a blue backlight versus the red backlight. But the red backlight works great with this red and chrome scooter, so I'm gonna leave the Sprint speedometer. It's not worth putting the Primavera speedometer. Although you could, it's not all that expensive. Um, but the most expensive pair of parts for this whole entire build will be the factory painted upper and lower clamshells of the handlebar covers and then next following with the uh, LED headlight and the handlebars. But it's still within reach to do all these parts. Obviously the difficult part would be special ordering these pair of painted parts. Sometimes the time frame to get those parts can be uh, rather long. It is possible to buy them unpainted, but the price difference isn't much versus the painted version. If you're building a custom bike from scratch, kind of like how I did with my robot Vespa several years ago, uh, you're gonna paint everything. So you can start with uh, used parts or unpainted parts and go from there. So let's get right to it. I'm pretty much just gonna start by beheading the scooter and we'll put the sole of a Primavera on the scooter. And we'll do a couple other mods. We'll put the badge on it, but I'm gonna leave the sprint style wheels this is gonna be the robot edition Primavera Sport. Without the digital dash, but it'll be a sportier version having those better looking sporty sprint wheels. And the last thing is we're gonna go ahead and drill this fender to accept the fender crest for Primavera. All right, so first uh, order is get this glove box out of the way because we're gonna have to disconnect connectors. And I'll get right off the bat, this is not, an easy do-it-yourself kind of project. Um, obviously with the easier jobs like doing oil change, I wanna show every single tool, every single step. I'm just gonna rush through everything on this video. It's just pretty much giving you a glimpse of everything you need to do to behead a Vespa Primavera Sprint and do this conversion that I'm doing on this uh, wonderful scooter here. So we're gonna get the glove box off. And if you want more details of any of this stuff, I have so many other videos where I've taken the glove box off in uh, much further detail, so. So go ahead and remove all the fasteners on the handlebar covers.
one by one. So as you saw, you can completely behead the Vespa Primavera Sprint. Uh, no issues whatsoever. Uh, you can even pull the intact hydraulic master cylinders through. I didn't have to disconnect any of that kind of stuff. Same with the throttle assembly. I just left it all together, uh, kind of just snaked it out of the uh, handlebars. So pretty much we're just gonna do the reverse steps. Uh, a couple things I'll show you before we jump into reassembly. So I have a Primavera handlebar set off a brand new takeoff uh, scooter, kind of that we did the vice versa on. Um, put the, the Primavera parts on, did a different color that we did. So I've been hanging on to these for a little bit. Um, like I said, all these parts are fairly inexpensive to order from the factory. They may be a little difficult. So we have the upper handlebar cover. And as you can see, the speedometers are the same shape. The main difference is they have these three screws that hold that little brow above the speedometer on the sprint. So pretty much just swap all the speedometer between the two. The screws are the same between um, the sprint and the Primavera, no difference there. And you pretty much just plop that right in there. It's the same, um, same shape, all that stuff. So no issues whatsoever. Keep in mind the real early Primaveras, like I'm talking the 2015, they did not have the ABS braking system. You see the speedometer says the word ABS on there. So it has the extra wiring that have the ABS indicator. But since we're, um, we have a brand new Sprint and a brand new Primavera and we're doing a swap, they both have ABS. They've had ABS for several um, um, years now. So I so got the speedometer swapped over, all pretty straightforward. And let me show you a little bit what's going on with the lower section of the handlebars. So just like the Sprint, the handlebars separate out, they're completely different because they mount the headlight differently. So I left these uh, turn signals in place. Believe it or not, these stems are different between the Primavera and Sprint. Uh, so I just left these turn signals in place. Normally I'd take all this stuff out and make it look Euro, but since this is a vehicle getting sold, uh, I want to leave it with the street legal American spec turn sales for the time being. So let me show you the handlebars. So I have the brand new LED headlight assembly. These are brand new handlebars. They were from the halogen version. And if you watch one of my prior videos where I put the LED headlight retrofit for um, an earlier model uh, Primavera, the holes are in a slightly different spot for these headlight adjuster screws. So you're gonna have to oval out these holes. I'm not gonna show how to do it in this video, but that prior video, I show how to um, add those extra holes. Um, the headlight uses slightly different hardware, a little bit smaller diameter hardware to mount the headlight to the handlebars. Of course, we wanna get the headlight out of the way and pretty much in reverse order, we're going to go ahead and drop the handlebars on uh, along with the lower handlebars cover and kind of string through all the uh, controls and then pretty much piece it all back together. And then we'll have a Primavera. All right, so we got pretty much just did the reverse. Uh, still don't have the little covers on the front, but it's easy enough to do a little bit. Make sure all your indicators work, the high beam, low beam, Beep. horn, brakes, both brake light switches. Just double check all that before we button this back up. And the last thing before I button this up is um, I wanna get some zip ties in there to secure all the wiring. All right, so we're gonna just get zip ties kind of uh, and pretty much it's not super critical like the engine area, but you want to secure all this wiring. The idea is you do not ever want to have the wiring pinch between the handlebar covers. Um, and there was a lot of other little nuances of putting this stuff together. Like this side's got that little pinch bolt. And if you want more details on that, you could watch my prior videos where I had, um, I replaced the lever purchase on a Primavera.
And with the turn cells, there's kind of extra slack of the wires and you pretty much just have the connector where it will go right into the speedometer there. And the speedometer, the, make sure everything moves nice and freely. Nothing's binding up. Make sure there's enough slack so we can still plug in a speedometer, which goes in on this uh, left left hand side. So before uh, we button this cover up, I'm going to go ahead and put these little covers on um, and cut all the, uh, the tails off. So we'll go ahead and click the speedometer. We'll do its little sweep if the power is still on. It's not going to hurt anything. And snap this all into place. And at this point, we could put those uh, chrome covers on. And it's best to make sure all the fitment's all correct on these before we put all the screws in. And you can see my lever is just a little bit too high. I may need to take the handlebar cover off and twist this uh, lever perch down. And sometimes you could just give it a little manipulation and next, I'll just go ahead and close up the handlebars. We'll get the headlight trim on, put the caps that cover the handlebar pinch bolts all back in place. And I'm using the same hardware as what's found on the Sprint to uh, close up the handlebar covers. So kind of button up, we'll put the headlight rim on and a pair of new mirrors and we pretty much have 78% Primavera at this point, I would say. All right, so let's get a pair of mirrors on this thing. We got the reverse threads on this left mirror. So here's the tricky part. We're gonna put a fender crest and I'm gonna switch it up since this is a nice uh, sporty red color and kind of making something that's a little bit of a mix of a Sprint and Primavera, having the classic lines of a Primavera, but it's kind of sporty. We're leaving those nice sporty black and silver uh, Sprint wheels. Uh, figure I'll switch it up and put a Vespa GTS 300 HPE fender crest. Well, the Sprint fender crest never had any holes for um, a fender crest. And the fender crest usually goes pretty close to um, the top up here. And to get it centered is gonna be a little bit of a trick. So let's start with the, some tape, go right across the top of the fender right there. I'm gonna drill somewhere. I would say our back hole Do something about like such. And we don't want to judge where the center is. So I'll show you how we'll, we're going to go about this. So, so make sure your tape sticks. So right where the bend is, you know, we got a little bit of arc. So I'm going to uh, just make a mark on both these sides right here. So. That's approximately what we need. We'll go ahead and get a piece of paper and cut it to that width and then fold it in half and then we'll have a halfway point. So I'm taking in this piece of paper. I'm going to line up with my line right there. Just roll it over, keep it approximately centered. And we're right there is right where my nail is. And I'll just go ahead and I'll give it a approximate cut. At this point, you just fold the paper in half. You go from your line, get our Sharpie, and we'll double check it from this direction and probably split the difference. So you're about right there. So our center line will be right there. So what I'll do is I like to just drill one hole 
for the first fender crest mount and also you're going to need the fender crest mounting hardware kit as well so it's a little bit more than just the fender crest uh, pretty much any of the vespa fender crest will work they're all real similar like the dimensions of them but we're going to go ahead and drill a hole right there probably drill like um, a little bigger than 3 16 so actually we're going to start with a quarter inch drill and if you're not confident you might want to do a, a center punch before you drill a hole in your fender. I'm drilling pretty slow, just enough to cut the... And we'll see if that's the right size. Actually, it can go a little bit larger, so I'm gonna go one size up from a quarter inch. So, got a 1764s, and that will go in just perfect. So, we got that one. And we're pretty much, you know, we'll make a little scribe. The nice thing is this mount's gonna be kind of hidden, so you're not gonna see much of it. But I'll do something about there. Um, and then I wanna figure out the center line, just like I did. So put the tape approximately across make two marks right where the, the radius starts and pretty much the same steps with the paper so you probably even use the same piece of paper kind of run that across cut the paper Fold in half, and there's our halfway point. And there's our center point right there. And that other mark that you may have made, I won't worry about too much. You could probably rub it right off with a little bit of a uh, cleaner. We'll go ahead and put the hardware on. And I don't even need to remove the mark, the, the little pen mark there. So the difficult part is doing this with the tire in the way. If you want to make the job a little easier on yourself, of course, feel free to remove, you know, support the scooter, remove the front tire. So I'll go ahead and just reach in there, get it started. Use a real short, stubby little screwdriver and we'll tighten the screw. All right, two last things to make our Sprint Sport Primavera. Or is it a Primavera Sport? Or is it a Primavera Sprint Sport? I don't know what you call it, but it's mostly now Primavera with the sportiness of a Sprint, is the way I think about it. So we're gonna put the kind of curved uh, rail. We're gonna leave the sporty Sprint seat with the white piping, but uh, I kind of want the Primavera badge, and it's not going to be any Primavera, it's going to be an S Primavera. So let's see if we can salvage part of this badge. Uh, when these badges are fresh and not all baked on, they actually peel off really, really nice. So you don't need any heat, you just they'll leave, leave behind a little bit of adhesive residue. We'll clean that all up. But I'm just going to pull everything but the S. And at this point, I'm gonna do a little surgery on the badge, super duper carefully. Don't wanna cut the paint, but if I make a little score, and I just need to do a little cleanup, cleanup of that adhesive residue, and then we'll put the Primavera badge on. So I'm using a little bit of denatured alcohol to break up the adhesive. It's a very uh, mild solvent. That's not gonna attack the paint in any means with a very clean rag here. And we wanna get most of it. The other good thing about using the denatured alcohol, if there's any wax or any type of spray cleaners on the paint, the painted clear coat, you'll break that away because when we put a new badge on, you want to adhere really, really, really nicely. So. so before we even put the badge on, kinda wanna mock up where we'll have the Primavera. So 
Yeah, I think that might look cool. Maybe a little bit of a space, so an S Primavera. And you could use this, the, the sticker backing. Originally, the way these uh, stickers worked, the original ones, is you line them up with these edges, so that's how you could position them. I kind of like it. Something like that. Kind of lined up the top of the P with the S. What do you think? Does that work? All right, so we'll remove the sprint style rear rack, which I actually prefer. I really like this angular look. But since we're kind of going for the more classic, traditional look with the Primavera round headlight, We'll put the more swoopy round grab rail. And of course, if you put a top case on it, you'd be putting a flat rack or some type of folding rack on this. Um, so you would be doing something different anyway, so. And here at my shop, I always have a surplus of the grab rails. Um, so oftentimes people do want to change out a brand new Grab rail for a rear rack I have to put a top case on or just have a folding rack. Let's put the pair of 10 millimeter nuts. They're a little shorter than the original Sprint Allen hardware that holds, holds the rear most mounting points of these uh, grab rails. So voila, no longer a Sprint, mostly a Primavera, and it's got the soul of a Sprint. However you want to say it, but it's pretty much to the untrained eye, everybody just thinks it's a Primavera. So hope you found that pretty interesting. I know I kind of rushed through everything, but this is kind of intended for somebody that's like really looking for a big project and wants to change up their scooter. Uh, you do have to spend some money on the LED headlight and upper and lower clamshells, the handlebars, those are the main parts that convert it, this whole handlebar setup to the Primavera. And then I did the added touches to put the correct Primavera mirrors, put the Primavera badge and the rear rack, and topped it off with the HPE GTS fender press. Well, thanks for watching. This is Robot here from Vespa Motorsport and ScooterWest.com. So if you're looking for all these parts to do a conversion like this, Check out scooterwest.com and feel free to contact the parts team to get the correct part numbers for a replacement set of handlebar covers. Uh, alternatively, you could probably find them unpainted as well and paint them to the color of your choice. Make a two-tone, you could do whatever you want. Uh, pretty much the way Vespas are built these days, I would consider them to be a parts bin bike. So it's pretty much this architecture of the Primavera Sprint. They make 50 cc, 125, 150, Sprint Primavera, various uh, trim levels, packages, a Note, a Sport, the digital dash. But the kind of, the underpinnings are all pretty much the same parts and everything's fairly interchangeable as you can see. Until next time, Robot here.